High rise control. Looks like we're going for a little, little A break over here. Oh no, it's like a fake. So they're kind of giving up this left street, but they're making sure that like they get kills towards mid map. They have the guy top alley. He's gonna try and go towards point from jumping up this ladder. It's a it's a common break that that teams do. And he's on point. He's just looking for. He doesn't realize no one is here, which is really funny. Prolude is actually gonna flank around through their side and pinch up the ladder. Let's see if he reads this. Very hard to read. You usually don't go around and then go up their ladder when you're on defense like this. So that's that's a really, really interesting play by Prolude. It's it's hard to do because you're assuming that they're gonna be towards you know this left window and can see you jumping up from the ladder, but he hit a timing where they weren't. This map is horrible, though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like like Chad is saying, dude. In ranked, in pro, it's just the the propane stuff, the weird spawns. Sometimes it's just it's very very difficult to deal with. Boston's gotten some space though. They've gotten some kills. Now they're getting onto the A point. They can start sacking this. They're gonna have one guy push up, basically to make sure that like he gets any kills off spawners. While the other two guys are, are playing safe on point. Yeez gets a kill. Unfortunately, this guy dies to an aid. They didn't have a trophy on point. And now the, now it's a three down for, for Boston. And they can start getting some pushed up uh, kills. Or sorry. It's a free, three down for Boston. Houston start got, can start getting pushed up kills. Now it's kind of even. Because they, they were spawning up super deep. So like it kind of has to be a little bit of a timer to, you know get back into the place so even if you get a three or four down you're not getting pushed up instantly once you get those first two kills because you still need to like look for obviously yeez who's back here so you're kind of like getting that kill but also starting to get pushed up but you know the guys off spawn are already starting to get pushed up too so sometimes you're in a standstill like this and whoever you get like these initial kills can start making a play boston gets two kills on the outer sides of the map they're going to try and converge onto b point start double capping this now once again pro is going to do the same thing He's going to go, he loves, I guess he loves this. Jumping up to the top ladder. Number one's actually just looking for this though. So he's not going to get caught with that again. Or he is going to get caught this time. Uh, he's not able to catch them off guard again, I should say. Now, this is a dangerous situation for Houston. You got two guys capping this point. One guy top row pain going to be watching this left window. Number eight, uh, one guy towards the A side. He's going to be watching mid window and can start getting some kills towards this side while these guys are capping this point so they're obviously not capping a point yet they're just making sure that they try and take some space this side so once they try and transition over uh that they'll be good so pro loot or sorry cami dies top of pain this is a big kill by spart to at least relieve some type of pressure but they're still going to get this point like these guys are just capping this pretty easily making sure that they're playing safe on time good plays they cap the point number four is still front window over here playing super annoying because look at the number eight here number eight doesn't know where this guy is going to be in the front and number four is just playing literally prone in front of these windows uh, making sure that anyone that comes out of these windows is basically dead and like they have to trade him they must trade him because there's no way for you to know where this guy is going to be like in front of your your base like this so if he doesn't get a kill here, that's surprising. But, you know, number eight uh, does pick him up because he exits this left window before any of these guys exit. So let's let's say if number six or seven, uh, you got those kills earlier and started pushing out the window, he gets a free kill 100%. But number eight takes the time to push up. Shawnee can't kill him in time. Shawnee's watching this cross, but can't kill him in time. He should get a kill on number four here. They get a kill. That's huge. Uh, but unfortunately for, you know, Houston... The, the, a, the B point is still capped, so you're just getting these kills to try and get out of your base. So that's step one. Just get the kills to get out of your base. Try and stabilize. Unfortunately for them, though, like Boston is still has these, you know, roamers towards this B side who just got the point that can try and make some disruptions uh, towards the base. So number one is just being super annoying here. Number three and number one team working. Number six actually gets the timing. Somehow he gets the timing uh, past number one. Let's see how this happens. So yeah, he gets in this corner. Number six kind of just bypasses him. Doesn't even look for him. 
kills number three. Number one is going to be getting past here. This is a situation where... Dude, Dylan Rex... Or who's who's here? Prolude? Yeah, so Prolude's going to be towards the desk. He has no idea that this guy is like towards the front windows. Because he's expecting number six to have cleared that. So he's thinking, you know, maybe this last guy pinched through underground. That's what he's watching. But unfortunately, you know, number one was here in this corner the whole time. Number six just completely walked past him. So Pendergram being a disruptor here. Number seven is able to trade him. So they've cleared everyone out. They know four down. If they're counting names, they know that everyone has accounted for. So they can start getting pushed back up onto, uh, onto the map. Big kill by Dylan Rex. Now he can get top propane control. Now he buys some time for the rest of his team to start getting like pushed up mid-map because he killed that guy. They're spawning super deep. This is still doable as a defense. You know, you're only down one life on defense. So like A point obviously is still really hard to capture. The only big thing here is since it's so defensively sided, like having that first tick on the A point can still be a difference maker if this goes around five because of ticks. So Dylan Rex is huge here. If you can get a kill, get more disruptions, it's huge. You know, fire is getting to pieces. That's a huge two piece. All you need to make sure is they're not coming out right window. Dylan Rex gets that kill. They know last guy live is now shooting underground here. They can play for pentagram. Four down. Everyone is spawning their base. Now they can get some really pushed up kills. Dylan Rex even pushes up into their window. So this should be a round win for Houston. If they don't win this round, I'll be I'll be absolutely mind blown. So they should close this round out. They know they're all spawning in the back. They have all the windows covered. This is a an absolute demon trap. Just don't scam. They're still getting pushed up here, still buying time for the rest of their team to get off spawn. These guys have to look for this guy in front of their base. And that's buying even more time. You know, 30 seconds left on the clock. Any kills that you get is just staggering their push. Sparts with a huge kill towards the A side here. Once again, two down. I mean, this is... That's a good stabilization. After, you know, Boston had capped that B point, it was looking a little bit sketchy. But, you know, taking that route through that left window, killing the guy in the front of their base, and then stabilizing the rest of these kills towards, like, this uh, propane side, and getting the trade on... Who is it? Uh, I forget who it was. Whoever was flanking Pro Loot over here and, and got that kill. I think it was Cammy. But a good stabilized defense after after that B cap. But again, that's that's just a testament to this map. Like it's really easy to win defenses if you start just getting kills. Like this is just straight up TDM sometimes on this map. So our friend died of the propane tank when he was in the window was mind blown. Yeah, dude, the propane kills on this map are just complete bullshit sometimes. It's just, it's insane some of the kills that happen. Even in, even in matches, you'll see it happen. Is Real Control just asked why aren't the pros playing it? Apparently, it just wasn't that great. Like, when we played it, it wasn't, it didn't look that great, like, playing-wise. So... Like, I don't even think anyone voted it in. They were just like, oh, the, the stuff that we have right now is at least, like, somewhat better. Vista's a beautiful map. Yeah, it actually is. Rio and Vista are both, like, really nice visually. All right, 2-2 two -two break over here for Houston. Fire gets a kill towards A-side. Pentagram should... Ooh, huge two-piece. This should be like a a decent trade, but fire getting this two piece makes this round, or at least the start of this round, really mixy. Because once you get those two kills on the A side, that that makes you really have to worry about this guy towards this A side. So if you can't get this trade here, and Tony isn't able to because he was in another gunfight, fire can be really disruptive now. And that it, wow, he just gets that kill because well, once again, new regen. This is a perfect example of new regen. Look how fast he regens here. So he he runs this corner. He's already regening. And he gets to 150 and can start challenging. Or 138. He's not even 158 and he can start challenging. If this is old patch, he can't chow probably for another one, one maybe two seconds. Or else he's dead. You see what I'm saying? He's, he's already 79 health because uh, Shawnee hit him. 
So Fire's playing just really well. Okay, now, what he's doing, he's literally just buying time. Remember what I was saying before with the guy prone in their base, making them have to overextend to kill him? That's what he's doing. He's just making sure these guys have a free double cap on time. So he's just being a disruptor right now. Unfortunately, he doesn't get a kill there. But, you know, Sparta spawn is able to capture anyone that's going through the mid window. They're still double capping. So this is just free, a free double cap for them. And Dylan Rex is still getting kills off, off of this, uh, off this point. Good nades though. Fortunately, they don't have a trophy on time. Let's see how Boston, can Boston try and break this in? Fire, fire gets another big kill towards the left side. Huge kill. Now, number four here, he spawned towards this. I think he spawned towards the left window. Oh, no, he just takes a route here just to make sure that they weren't coming towards A-side. But now he's going to go cut towards the middle of the map. And he's going to try and help uh, this B-point out. Hey, what's good, Riley Scott? How's it going? So even though he tries to break from mid-map here, number six can see him. He's probably getting shots on. And then number five can get the trade right there. So he's just helping out his, his teammate on time. Now he's going to watch their backside point. He can see Pentagram trying to jump up here. It's a huge kill. They solidify the point. And he gets the kill left street. So Dylan Rex, huge. Oh my God, he's 16 and six. I didn't realize that. He's actually having an insane map. Huge kills there. Because that, that solidifies the B cap. There was a chance that like Boston could have retaking control of that but now that they solidify the b cap they're up five lives this is a very winnable round and they have a streak so no trophies are stopping this new patch let's see what we can do with this streak he gets a kill inside the window so he has an angle to get actually uh through the through the window there and these guys are still spawning towards the a side and they are just they are just farming them look at this spawn trap Because they're spawning in the corner here towards this A side, number five has number five and eight are literally just crossing them, spawn trapping them, NW2 style. Look at this. They're still spawning there. They're not expect. I don't think uh, Houston is expecting them to keep spawning there, but okay. So once once he starts pushing up towards a little bit further towards the like the right window, uh, they're gonna spawn left side. And now Dylan Rex can play for it. Oh, that's a, that's some good shots. Whoever was on this right side, who was it? Whoever gets these shots off, I think it's Yeez. He can put this cover fire for these guys coming off spawn, and that's actually huge. Was it Yeez? Oh, no, it was actually Shawnee. It was Shawnee. He's in the back window shooting here at the top for Dylan Rex. If he's not shooting there and not looking for it, he probably gets a two-piece on Pentagram and Cami, or at least one. Hey, Lonnie, how's it going? Good morning. But, oh my god, they're just getting all these kills. Look at Spart. Spart on the A point gets one, two. Let's see if we can get a third here. He sees this other guy close. Third. Three piece for Spot solo on the A point. Dylan Rex gets another kill on the ground. They can just double stack this and win the point right here. Like, they're up 11 lives on offense. This is an absolute monster round by Houston. Like, this is an absolute destruction. Now they're just going for a spawn kill. They're just trying to win off live straight up. 19 to 8. Number 5 is getting pushed up. Number 6 getting pushed up. Let's see if we can get any kills. Pentagram pe uh, peels him. He goes one for one. Boston is kind of stabilized towards this side, but again, they're still down 10 lives. All, all Houston has to do is play trades here. Just make sure you're, you're going together. See this guy low blue, they should get this kill. Okay, we get the trade. Again. They get the kills towards A point. Last guy alive towards this B side. They can just literally stack this if they wanted to. But number five is going to go underground for spawn kills. It's, it's 12 to 4. You, you can afford to do that. With a minute and 20 seconds left, you can literally just take chances, take risks to take chows. Yeah. This, this round's... Should be close to over. These they're getting some picks here, but at the end of the day, this is just gonna. I mean, this is just gonna go Houston's round. So they start off 2-0. That was a that was a really big offense. Something like that is so huge because, you know, offense once again not that great on this map. 
But if you can start chaining kills and you know, once again play kind of like TDM and win that TDM, it, it's a huge round. Boston kind of with the same break that we saw before where they're jumping off uh, or they're, it's kind of like A-sided, but they're jumping up this ladder trying to get to the point, kind of playing kills toward the mid-map. They see this guy pushing up towards the B street. They can kill him. They solidify like control towards uh, at least like, you know, their side of the map because they've killed number six now and now they can start capping point. Now they got to help Yeez on point. So that would have been a huge kill for Yeez, but unfortunately he just gets killed. No trades in, in because no one has position to do so. They're on the A point, kind of disrupting a little bit over here. But Fire, Fire is getting all these kills, bro. Fire is getting a lot of big kills. They get three, they get three down. One guy left alive. They don't know if he's bottom blue. Number five gets killed bottom blue, so they know he's last guy alive is underground. And they're just playing, they're just playing spawners now. Number seven has his right window. Number eight can try and help out towards, you know, mid or uh, this left window too. Number six gonna see them left window, gets another kill, down Rex. Once again, monster map, 22 and 11. They actually start, they finally get this kill towards this, this heli side, and that's gonna uh, make fire move. So there's a position now where you can start just getting on this A point. And let's see if Yeez picks this up. Yeez doesn't pick up this kill because it, it's it's a pretty hard pickup because this guy's just coming off of mid map. They're not stuck in it. They're going and they're gonna start double capping this. They need to they need to basically double cap this because they don't have any other chance to basically win this round. They need to get at least a tick or two, try and just salvage something from this round before they lose the game, obviously. So they get that one kill. They get traded on point though. Huge kill by Cami. If you can get another kill, that's that's massive. They can actually cap this point. So that was their last ditch effort. That's when when they got double, you no, know, the, the double cap right there. They're just it's last ditch effort. You're trying to just get something this round, and that's what they do. So they're trying to need Cami off point. Let's see if he can stay alive. He's 32 HP, just a sliver left. They're gonna be chasing him on point. They contest it. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the cap. So that's not great for Boston. But what that does is it opens up the B side. So it's kind of like you're shifting the weight of the map from one side to the other because. You know, they have to get you back at the A point. They have to send like reinforcements there and they can't fill out the map towards the B side, which allows some openings towards the B side here for Boston. So, you know, good job on Cammy for staying alive as long as possible. That's all you really need to do because he was only one on point there. And now that what that allows is that these guys can double stack point or even triple stack. So looks like they're going to try and OK, it looks like they're just double stacking. One guy was actually underground. So unfortunately, ooh, someone Someone dies on, on point. I think it was Pendagram. And they just get the lot, final guy on the hill. So unfortunately, this was a position where they they need to be playing safe on point, double capping this. Unfortunately, Pendagram does die for it. And he just has to take a child because he's just left alone on point. They get back on A point. Let's see if they can cap this once again because it wasn't fully decapped. I don't think it was fully decapped. Yeah, it wasn't fully decapped. So they didn't actually decap this point because they had to get these kills on B. So once again, kind of shifting the weight again. You shift the weight, you go to the B side. Well, now there's no bang towards the A side. So now that's what Boston's going to take. They're going to take that opening towards the A side, try and finish this cap that they were starting before. They got to pick this guy up underground. He gets some shots off, but doesn't actually get a kill. So that's, that's kind of big. Well, now he does, but he should get traded here. Gets traded. They get the cap on eight point. They should get another kill. Eight. Nope. Fire actually huge, huge kill again. Fire and Dunrex are having the maps of their fucking career right now. This is a, a really big uh, high rise control out of them. Now B points only one left. They need two ticks on it. That's where you're gonna see Spart here already trying to get positioning towards like this deep left street. If he can stop reinforcements towards this deep, you know, B street, uh, you're just making them like have to go from this this right window and try and retake it as a, as a team, or at least go through like underground or go through mid or something like that. So it doesn't look like they want to wrap back towards the window because they know he could be pushed up somewhere over here, and they're gonna try and do something towards the mid map to get on point instead. They're just trying to find a pick here. 
So they see two guys towards their back base, one guy towards top or pain based on where the shots are going. Hey, Nick Stro, what's up? Glad you could be here. Sorry, I haven't been looking at chat too much because I've been focused on this, but I'll, I'll, start, uh, I'll start paying a little bit more attention. Cami rocking Rick Ryan's operator. Love, love that. I didn't notice that. That's actually funny. I'll talk about I'll talk about uh, small talk and death toms uh, right after this after this round. So number since we saw those those shots going in their base and through like top row paint over here, number four is going to take a timing geese. He's going to take a timing through the white window and try and get through towards the base. Make sure that he can try and disrupt once again because they need some type of opening in this round to get back onto this B point to possibly win an offense. So. He gets a kill. That's huge. They also get a, a kill on number eight, number on fire. So now this is an opportunity where they know one guy for sure, based on just UAV, is going to be on the point because they know, like this this point wouldn't be red otherwise, and they know that another guy was probably either propane or deep street, like towards this B side. I'm not sure if number two saw him here. I don't think he did. Let's see. No, he doesn't look for it, unfortunately. So this guy, number seven, he's like. On the other side of the map disrupting too so number four yeez is still on their base disrupting but you also have spar disrupting on this side of the map so you kind of have to play for him because they they play for yeez here but this is a weird situation where you're spawning on the other side and you need to make sure that you kill this guy if you want to have to a chance in like winning this round but spar is just playing his life over here and playing it really well and they they somewhat stabilize here look number three is the only one that's possibly out and he's, once again, going to try and disrupt. You constantly see this pattern of people, you know, trying to get stabilized, but also trying to disrupt the enemy team from getting stabilized. Look at number seven. He's still getting kills here. He's playing corners. They finally trade him out. Now they know everyone's in front of them. But look at number eight. Let's, let's see what number eight's going to do. He's still underground. He's trying to make a play. He gets a kill. Now he goes through their underground. He closes the door. He's just being a nuisance. He unfortunately gets killed for it, but uh, once again, he's buying that time. There's only one life left alive for this Boston team, and Houston should win this round. They win it 3-0. Pretty clean control from Houston, honestly. A really, really good job by uh, Fire and Dylan Rex. They had really good maps. All right. Death Talk and Small, small Talk. Oh, no. Not Death Talk. Death Comms and Small Talk. We'll talk about them. So what type of comms should a team have besides death comms? So death comms are, if if anyone doesn't know, death comms are like, uh, he's one shot here. X is one shot at this place, or X is dead here, or I'm dead, like, I, you would never say I'm dead, but you're just saying like, where the, where the person that killed you is, maybe his name too, just to give information to your team. It's the easiest information to give because, you know, you're already dead. You know who killed you and you know where the person is if you died to him, you know, or most of the time, you know where they, they are. So that's the easiest comm to give. But the, the big thing about those comms is it's, it takes no game knowledge to actually like make those type of comms. So the, the, the small talk that everyone wants to talk about and the, the real difference maker for comms is, is small talk between players. So what you're holding in a situation where you're holding or breaking, what you're covering, what your teammates are covering, or like if you're calling out for your team, if you can cover out, call out for your team, like I'm holding this, you should hold this. If you can co like coordinate with them in that way where you're commanding them, or I wouldn't say commanding them, but you're directing them to do something else, that helps you and them so much because you know, based on your situation, what you're looking at on your screen, what you need to do, and based on that information, you can deduce what they should be doing as well if you have the, you know, the game knowledge to be doing that. If you know that, like, let's say, let's say it's, uh, uh, let's say you're just on this, this B point here, you're capping, and you're in this corner capping, watching uh, this here. Let me go to the mini map here. Let's say you're capping the B point. Let me bring up the arrow. You're capping the B point from here. You're watching this lane on the B point because you know if they're going to be coming and trying to converge on you on the B point from this defensive side, they could be coming from this B lane or they could be coming from like 
up here. So you're playing deep in this corner where you're watching the ladder and you're, you know, I mean, you could get camered from this guy towards B Street, whatever, but you are not watching this mid lane. You, there's no way for you to watch all three lanes. So what you could do here is say, you know, I'm watching my B Street, someone watch my mid lane. So that means that someone, you know, let's say they're coming out spawn their mid window, they can pick up their mid lane or your mid lane so that you don't have to worry about that. So that type of small talk is little coordination bits that you can help out with your team because you can direct them either to do something or you can make sure that you're calming, making sure you're you're saying like, even if you're if you're this guy, if you're this guy now and you know your teammate is on this B point, you can just say, I have your mid. That reassures them that they don't need to watch it. You know what I'm saying? So rather than just, you know, being that directive voice, if you're just saying what you have or what you're watching from that perspective they know what they need to be watching themselves because they're not going to watch the same thing as you if you say i'm having I, i'm holding mid all they need to do is just readjust so like if they're holding mid and you say i have your mid because you have a better angle to do so because you're you're coming out spawn all you need to do is shift to the right and you can be holding something else and it's more efficient that way because now you're holding two different things one person off spawn is holding the mid mid cut and you're on point watching your B street. 